sunrise. Oh yeah. Never fished here before. So you run an autopilot right now, or you just yeah. yeah. For some reason, my blinky flashers are not blinking. everyone from Puget Sound, Mike Carey with Northwest Fishing Reports. We are fishing the Tulalip Bubble today. I'm with Randy Costello and his friend Andy. We're on Randy's beautiful 21-foot Thunder Jet. Started at 03 a.m., which is pretty early, but that's okay because we're on the water fishing. We've already had one takedown, which unfortunately came unbuttoned. We're gonna show you today the fishery here at the Bubble, and Randy's gonna explain some techniques Stay tuned, you're watching Northwest Fishing Reports. Good morning, Mike. Uh, glad I can share this uh, fishery with you. We're fishing uh, Tulalip Bubble. It's just north of the uh, mouth of the Snohomish River. It's a unique fishery where they, they kind of keep you within a certain boundary, and it's very critical to stay within those boundaries, the, the, the boundaries identified in the WDFW regs. Um, it's a good idea to put a waypoint on your meter or on your uh, chart and or at least know where the boundaries are so you can legally fish this. It's a great fishery. Um, you're allowed to keep two fish, it's two poles. It is a bit of a busy fishery at times. Um, and it can be really good, but there are days where getting one fish in the boat is gonna be a struggle, so we'll see what happens. Um, fish it, typical salmon gear, flashers, spoons. Uh, sometimes flies will work, but I always start with flashers and spoons. And we'll have more as we progress through the day. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Taking line like crazy. Nice. Yeah, I'm good right now. Hot fish, Andy. Wow. I can't That's even turn him around. Oh, yeah. I can't even turn him towards me. Holy moly. Wow. I haven't That's fought a salmon good. like this in a long time. I'm used to That's a nice fish. Wow. I can't even gain anything on him. Is it Holman? You probably built it. You're just awesome folks. 
<laughs> wow. This is a nice fish, Randy. Oh my god. Guys, we got a fish on. <laughs> wow. It's been a long time since I had one that pulled like this one. <laughs> so usually I mark it on the meters. <laughs> the guy over here is going to cut us off. Wow. Man, he's out there. Way out there. He's on the surface already. Wow. Good. Maybe getting him. No. Thought he was tired there for a minute. I think we're gonna hit a double. That'd be awesome. Who's got a film? Yeah, that's a good question. Oh, nice. Fish on the surface. Fish on the surface action. Nice fish. So handy when we go to net them. Just stand forward. behind me. Yep. Oh, oh shoot. Sure. Come back. Come on, come on. It's all right. I'll get back. We can. Great job. So I'm gonna have to do a funky net oh, job. He's not ready. <laughs> he's also up around the down. Yep, I see that. So um what do you want me to do? Okay. Hey. We're doing good. Uh-oh. Okay. Uh-oh. <laughs> Look at this fish! Yeah! Oh, nice! Yep. We got it. Um, as you can tell, he went around the uh, downrigger cable. Around the downrigger cable, cable, yep. So, is he cornered double to make sure he's clipped? Make sure he's clipped. Yeah. He's clipped. What a beautiful fish. That is fish. a beauty. Oh, holy wow. smokes. Yeah, keep the pressure in the net handle. Let yep. me get this I out of here. Oh my god, that is a nice. Good job, Andy. Woohoo! Yeah! Nice. That fish. We're gonna have to get a couple still shots. That is a beauty. Dude, that's gotta be the biggest uh, salmon I've caught in years. Awesome. I'm so pretty nice for you. <laughs> Me too. That is so Holy cool. cow, that's awesome. <laughs> Woo, I haven't felt that in a long time. <laughs> Feel the burn, huh? Yeah. It's the first time I've had a fish run, pull that much line on me. I couldn't turn him at first at all. He wouldn't even turn towards the boat. That is a beautiful fish. I can smell him. So that's, when I say that, it's a, there's a unique smell of schnook. Yeah. And I, even from up here, I can smell him. That thing is gorgeous. It's gotta be. 13 pounds, probably 14 pounds. Yeah, 17, maybe. I think. I mean, monster. this is a, just we can weigh them. Well, I don't know. That is a beautiful fish. Uh, maybe at least 15. 15 at least. So pretty. Dude, that's a beaut. I've that not caught a, fa a fish like this in years. That's awesome. 17 pounds. Woo! So I've got to deal with this. Yep, I got it. 
Oh man, that's a nice fish. Hey Mike, what did you think of that? That was pretty incredible. My turn. You're next. Well, we're out here early and I know everybody was moaning and groaning and I don't want to hear it because I actually, I got up at 12.30 this morning to get everything ready. But it's five o'clock in the morning and we've got number one on the deck. Beautiful uh, 17 pound Chinook. There's a fish. Something was going on. <laughs> we'll segue that. <laughs> this is not your 17 pound fish. <laughs> This no. But hey, it's a fish. It's a fish. It's a fish. It looks like it might be a cold. Can we keep cold? I think so. When you're fishing the bubble, there's a northern boundary and a southern boundary. We're right at the northern boundary right now, and what I did is on my chart, I marked the, the north boundary. So um, this is basically over here on the shore, and this is the northwest corner. And so when we get down to the other end, I'll show you why basically a line down to it, that area is open and you don't want to catch yourself going outside of that because they will get you. Fish on. I think we got another shaker. Yeah. 82. The yep. sun's come out. Lots of boats out here this morning. I guess I'm destined for shaker duty. Oh, got seaweed's causing problems. My rod tip is... Yeah. I think it's working. That helps. There's a little tip from Randy how to clear your rod tip. <laughs> That's a bigger shaker. That's a bigger shaker, but... Um, Oh, no, it's no, it's not. <laughs> so let's, let's bring this up. Yep. So Randy will show you how to release these fish safely. As we know, um, if you're not keeping it, it's got to go, it basically has to stay in the water. And I found the quickest way to do that is to take this hook with spoon and you saw the fish go away. For those of you counting, that's one 17 pound fish for Randy. Two shakers for Mike. I'm still up. Yes, sir. <laughs> so, um, our most success today has been with the, uh, gosh, I don't even know what they're actually called anymore. I've been calling them blinkies for so long. A friend of mine called them that, and that's what I call them. Um, but it's a flasher with the built-in light in here that flashes different colors. And this morning, anyway, it has definitely been the most productive flasher we've got. Not this color, but a different color. But uh, can be very effective. I think it's shaker number three. Is it? <laughs> Andy, I appreciate you. Uh, I appreciate you handing off these rods to me. <laughs> Probably wish I handed off a little bigger one earlier, though, huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the first one of the day was the one to hand off, right? Yeah. Nah, it's just a gorgeous day out here. I oh, came, came on off the... as soon as he hit the surface. We've actually done fairly well today, con considering we've got a 17 pounder in the boat. We've hit a few shakers and a couple takedowns that didn't stick. Um, the, the the fishery is uh, kind of a unique situation where small boats can fish it because it is pretty close to the uh, boat ramp in the Everett. Um, as with any water anybody would be fishing, you need to you know, kind of pay attention to the seas, what the wind is doing, and certainly know the capabilities of your boat. 
now it's typically a flasher spoon flasher fly show um, if you have completely flat water there's some areas up around the mouth of the bay that is excellent for jigging for salmon and it can be really fun but you really need to have kind of a special set of conditions to make that work um, and unfortunately more often than not there's wind up in here so it's it the options for jigging for salmon are usually pretty limited uh, to address the boundaries again, there's a, a north-south, east-west boundary. You basically got a fish on the other rod again. Missed. Because if the water's running hard, yeah, it'll wash you right into that pier. Hey, little guy. You got this one. Randy, I want to thank you for taking Andy and I out this morning. First time fishing the bubble and a pretty neat experience. Yeah, I'm glad I had the opportunity. The, the, today's been a blast. We got a nice Chinook. We had a lot of some other opportunities, some shakers. Today we're pretty much using 11-inch flasher with the Blinky. And um, pardon the shameless plug, but these are made for special for holiday sports in Burlington. They're uh, three-inch coyote spoons. And it was our ticket today. They, they were very effective. You put a little scent on those spoons. Yeah, a little scent, either anchovy scent or herring scent. And it was a great day. We even had a, some bonus time with a gray whale that showed very well. So mm -hmm. it was a special day. Definitely a morning fishery. Very much so. That first couple hours or the last couple hours of the day. I don't know where these fish go during the middle of the day, but I'm hard pressed to find them. Well, we got one very special fish today, so I count that as a definite positive day. Yeah, Mike, th th it was pretty cool. We, we, you don't get 17 pound Chinook in the inner Puget Sound too much anymore. Um, it's, it's a rare treat to get a fish that is bright as, and pretty as this fish was. So guys, there's not a lot of opportunities to go catch Chinook in the Sound in June. This is one of them. So. Give it a try and we'll see you guys on the water.